Welcome, welcome, welcome to week two. We are going to be talking about connections and making connections between two texts. Um, this is week two. Please understand that a lot of the skills from week one will carry over into week two. You will be expected to be able to build upon those skills from week one and elaborate upon them in week two. And that's where connections come into play. Uh, when it comes to making connections from one text to another, there are three different ways of doing it. Um, the first is to identify a key term, maybe from the first text, and then get an example from text number two that exemplifies, elaborates upon, illustrates, defines the key term from the first text. So basically what you're doing is this first text has this concept, this key term, and I can see it being defined or understood in an example from the second text. That's your connection. Text one has an idea, text two exemplifies it. That's number one. Number two is that you can compare or contrast specific concrete examples between text one and text two. And usually that has to do with key terms or key concepts. Uh, these examples from text one and text two are definitely influenced by um, a key term or a key concept from these authors. And sometimes you can find that there are examples in text number one and text number two that confirm with one another or that they conflict with one another or that they um, complicate or problematize one another. That's another way of doing it. Again, uh, one text to another text, how do they work together with this concept? That's the second way. The third way is to find a quote from author one, and you can kind of put it next to a quote from author two and see how if they illustrate the same thing. There could be a conflict. There could be not a conflict. Um, it could complicate something or it can problematize something. And I will get into the whole concept of conflicting or problematizing in a second, all right? These are the three different ways of making connections. It's basically something from one and something from two. How do they work together? I am not in any way asking you to find a, a quote in, in the first text and a quote in the second text that have the same words. That's not helpful. Just simply because they have the same words doesn't mean that they're talking about that word, that term, in the same way. You want to make sure that within the context of each text, this term, this concept is being used in the same way. It's about the way that you read and understand the texts. So if David Foster Wallace is using the word education or learning in a very specific way where he defines it and redefines it, and Cottigan is using the words learning or education in a different way, the words might be the same, but the context the definition, the ideas are different. It's up to you as a close reader and a smart reader to understand those differences and be able to make the connection. Whereas one text says that this term means one thing, this other text means something completely different. And me, as the person who is putting these two things together, connecting them, I am now coming up on my own idea, my own argument, because of this conflict, or because of the way that even though they're different, there's still a similarity in there. It's up to you as the reader, as the person who's going to be writing this paper, to make sure that you can synthesize these ideas and put them into your own words, and not just into your own words, but into your own idea. It's not about regurgitating or repeating what author number one or author number two is saying. I'm not asking you to do a book report. 
I don't need you to repeat what David Foster Wallace is saying and saying that Garnet Cottigan is basically agreeing with him. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm asking you to use these texts, to use the texts as evidence. You have your own idea, your own way of understanding, let's just say the word education or the word learning. You have your own idea about what learning is or what education is. David Foster Wallace has his own idea. Garnet Cottigan has his own idea. How do they work together or work against each other to help you better understand your own idea about learning or education? And that's what making connections is all about, is synthesizing these ideas. And it's really, it's, it's not the hardest thing on earth. It just takes a lot of practice. And that's what this week is all about, is, is really getting some practice. And, and one of the best ways of understanding this concept comes on page 32 of the connections uh, section of our handbook. Simple ways of thinking about connecting authors. It's a little uh, paragraph there, and it has a few examples with bullet points on like how to really link these two types of things together, okay? Uh, please read that. It's very helpful. And moving forward, I will be giving you some examples of other student papers, which I got their permission to use, where they have their own idea and they're connecting two different texts to make that idea more palatable, better. The thing that I want you to understand, too, is that I am not just telling you um, what connections are. I'm hoping to teach you what connections are and how they work really well together, okay? And there are two different ways, and, there's, and it's acronyms, okay? Three C's. Three C's. Confirm. Conflict. Complicate. Do the two quotes, the two terms, the two concepts... Do they confirm with one another? Do them working together confirm with your own idea about what something means? Do these two concepts that you are connecting together, these two terms that you're connecting together, these quotes that you're connecting together, do they conflict with one another? That's always fun. That's always fun when they conflict with one another. It's like, Author number one, David Foster Wallace is saying this one thing. Garnet Cottigan is saying this other thing. I think this other thing, this conflict is actually making me think a lot more and I'm coming up with my own ideas. That's always wonderful, you know, because friction makes fire. And when you have this conflict, it can help spark ideas in yourself, right? Finally, complicates is maybe something that might be a little bit more difficult for some students to understand is when you complicate something. Let's say that David Foster Wallace is using the term education in one way, right? And he's defining it and redefining it. And you find a great quote where he defines it. And then you read Garnett Cottigan for this week. And you found that he finds, it's like talking about education or talking about learning you know, he does that. He may not use the same words, but that's the concept. And he's talking about it, and it mostly lines up. It mostly lines up with what David Foster Wallace is talking about. But here's the complication, is that there's a piece of it that doesn't line up. And it's that piece that doesn't line up that you want to investigate that you will use to build an argument in your paper. They might confirm, they might contradict, but if they complicate each other, that's a more nuanced or, or a more strategic way of building an argument in a paper. So the three C's is something that I want you to really pay attention to, not really talked about inside of our reading, and I'm telling it to you now. Confirm, contradict, complicate. If you can find quotes, terms, concepts that confirm with one another, awesome. If you can find those that conflict with one another, great. That's wonderful. 
If you can find those that complicate each other, that make it so that it's like, yeah, we're kind of mostly in agreement, or we're mostly in disagreement, but there's this one thing that we have in common. But there's this one thing that is completely different from text number two versus text number one. Those are the things to really pick up on. And they're the, they're the things that start the friction. They're the things that start the sparks that get you to really start thinking about things. Okay? And what I want everyone to start thinking about when you are going through your readings, going through the readings about uh, connections and understanding how to build connections and all that kind of stuff is I want you to think about how you're going to use all this information. The next video will be about quoting effectively, right? But I think at this point, you can pull out some quotes on your own. But the way that I want you to think about structuring a body paragraph, your connections paragraph, not your introduction, not your conclusion, but like the three or four paragraphs that you will have in between that takes a quote from text number one and takes a quote from text number two and connects them and it, con uh, it conflicts or it confirms or it complicates any of those things. The thing that I want you to think about is, 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 is a formula. Fit it. F-I-T-I-T. -I -T. Fit it. Every body paragraph needs to follow the formula of fit it. F, focal sentence. According to our reading, we call it the topic sentence. And because we're very smart in academia, we decided not to make the acronym start with a T. We decided to make it start with an F. Fit it. Let's fit all of these ideas together. So the first thing is your focal sentence. What is this paragraph going to be addressing? What are we talking about? We're going to talk about education and how it is weird, right? I introduce a quote from text number one. Focal sentence, introduce the new quote, and then tie it, F-I-T, focus, introduce, tie that quote into the next quote, F-I-T, focus, sentence, introduce, quote, T, Tie quote to next introduced quote. And then from there, after these two things are tied together, connected, then you have um, the whole a bit of where you will elaborate on why those two things work together and you will transition into a new paragraph. Focal sentence, introduce quote number one, tie quote number one to the introduced quote number two. And then you're going to tie everything together and transition into the next paragraph. Fit it. I love acronyms. They're really helpful. And when it comes to college level writing, it's very formulaic. If you follow the fit it method, and all of the things that you have found in your reading and in this video, um, I think that you'll do a pretty good job of making great body paragraphs. Any questions or concerns, by all means, contact me via IU email. But you have readings that you have, you have information, and you have this video. If there are still some questions or concerns, please contact me. All right, smart people, you know what connections are. Go do what it is that you do.